I'm Leon Todd for G66. Welcome to another Tuesday. Tone tip on today's video, I want to talk about the align feature in the cab block and how I personally like to use it with Dyna cabs to create a slightly more natural sound out of multiple mic blends. Before we do that, I have the Plexi 50 watt 6 CA7 model paired up with this 4x12 1960 TV Dyna cab. I've got the dynamic one microphone and I've just set the position where you can see it. There is a little bit of reverb here. I'm using the good old London plate. Let's just hear this for an old school rock and roll tone. <laughs> Pretty addictive sound as it is. Now, a classic thing to do with real cabinets and real microphones is to take a dynamic mic and a ribbon mic and blend them together. So what I'm gonna do here is I'm just gonna add the same Dynacab 4x12 1960 TV. I've selected the ribbon mic on there and I'm just gonna blend them at a one-to-one -one ratio. Now, normally when I mic up a real cab with a ribbon mic, I'll basically place the ribbon mic quite close to the speaker grill right on the cap as it is here. So I might just back this off a little bit. Let's hear the ribbon on its own and then blended with the brighter dynamic. <laughs> Now, the really amazing feature about Dyna cabs is that every single one of those positions is automatically phase aligned, which makes things so much easier. In the real world, if you were moving real microphones around and you had multiple mics on there, and you found a really nice position for one and a really nice position on the other, there is no guarantee they are going to be in phase. However, sometimes when you're micing real cabs with real mics, just having them slightly out of phase can really make or break the guitar sound on there. So the way we can get that behavior back in the Axe FX is to go to the Align tab in here. So what I want you to do is, you know, bring up your favorite amp and Dynacab combo, try a Dynamic and a Ribbon in there with the same Dynacab. Then do this, just like play some guitar with them perfectly aligned and then take the distance too and, you know, crank it right up so that they are way out of phase over here. You know, set it to like, 100, 200 mils or something like that. And just have a listen to the tone. I'll give you an example. Now with the phase way out, it sounds <laughs> phasey and terrible. Sometimes you want that phasey terrible sound though. So that's how you can get that in there. But a lot of the time when we want, you know, a kind of traditional guitar cab sound in there, we want our mics quite closely, not perfectly in phase. So what you can do is find the sweet spot in there between being totally washy sounding with those like 100 plus millimeter settings or being really, really tight. And what I get out of these perfectly aligned cabs is that, you know, the high frequencies retain all the kind of sizzle in there. And sometimes at high volume, you don't really want that. So what I would recommend playing around with is try five millimeter intervals on here. So, you know, start with them five millimeters out and then go to 10, 15 and 20 until you can kind of hear a difference in there. So let's do that. <laughs> Oh, 
You could hear somewhere between about 20 and 30 millimeters on there for this particular cab and mic combo was a sweet spot. As I got to about 30, the top end really started to become a bit too muffled in there. At 50, it's really sounding washy and phasey in there. So let's maybe go for 25 and you can use the zoom feature on here as well if you really wanna kind of see the entire waveform where you can zoom in for a bit more precision on there. But I quite like that. You can hear in there, it's taking out just enough of that kind of sizzle without the low end becoming phasey. And I think when the low end becomes noticeably phasey, uh, that's generally undesirable with guitar sounds. You know, of course, there's no rules, but you know, you're going for a kind of traditional rock and roll sound. You want the low end to be quite tight and then the high end to be a little bit smoother. It's a great way to achieve this and get this so-called natural blend with Dynacab. So let's see the difference between them perfectly aligned. So uh, setting a zero and then 25. The high end's just gonna be a bit smoother. Overall, a bit more pleasant. <laughs> You can really get into the weeds with this and you know adjust this to the millimeter or to the tenth of a millimeter in there, which is pretty amazing. But you know, somewhere between maybe 15 and 25 sounds pretty good across most cabs for my liking. Let's hear a different cab. This is the 4x12 recto straight. We'll hear them perfectly aligned, and then I'll go for that setting of 15 on there. <laughs> One last fun thing you can do with the align feature is once you've kind of found that blend that you like is just very slightly offset the panning on each of these. So we'll go from having them straight down the center to about 20% left and right. With this, you do have to be careful if you're gonna sum your signal to mono, but we already know that that particular blend is quite nice. So this is, I guess, kind of akin to using a very short delay pan to one side on your signal to give this kind of stereo width. Let's have a listen to that same dynamic one and rhythm blend where I have shifted the align. Where is it? It's at 22 millimeters. Again, I might play with this a little bit more, but I'll just pan them slightly left and right for a bit of space. <laughs> Something like that anyway. Try this approach with your favorite Dynacab mix. Just add a very slight offset with the alignment and you might get some really desirable results. If you have any other questions about Dynacabs or if you have requests for future topics that you want me to cover on these Tuesday Tone Tip videos, let me know in the comments section below. Thanks so much for your support and I'll see you all next week. Take it easy.